Alright guys, this is just a video on the Umarex HDX68 and um, this is a ch air chamber extension using the Z chamber um, Sean Kemper just made a video and he showed us how a Z chamber will fit in the back but you gotta clean out a bunch of metal and stuff here and cut into the casing and there's a few other worries about the brass pipes, other concerns he mentioned about if you take too much metal off, then that might not seal. You might lose O-rings and shit in there. He is correct about that. If you don't do, do it right. But the good thing is, um, there's enough material there. to You can leave that there. So you don't have to take all that away at all. Um, I have pics in the Facebook. But I don't know if I can get in there and show you. Which I probably can right now. I got the shell open. But anyways, first of all, um, this is also an HPA conversion as well. And before I get into any of that though, um, back in the Facebook groups when this marker first came out, before anyone really had any shops other than Home Defense 24 and there's a few other ones out there, um, we all used to talk about how we can convert this to HPA and the HDS ever since those come out and they just weren't really able to. Well, first person to ever do this was to tap into this and bring it down into here with a special pipe. And then out here, and then you can run uh, HPA through it, was uh, Critical Situations, Jonathan Scott. Um, he was the first one to do all this. He, we all chatted about it, and he just became the man. He went out and got the materials, the, the, the machinery, and everything, and he just started making them come to life with lots of other parts and stuff, too, for these markers and paintball guns and stuff. But, um, yeah, also Home Defense 24 makes a whole shitload of parts, a bunch of parts. Um, they have everything for every gun, every marker too. Same with critical situations. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I seen Kemper's video last night, and, uh, so I spent all night cutting this, uh, and, uh, grinding the shell out. Like, I got it open here, so don't mind the sweat there, it's just, uh, I'm getting ready to lift it for you guys, but... And uh, if you can see, I got that's an extra expanded Z chamber in there, so it almost doubles the the air chamber. So the amount of liquid that could fill up into there should be a lot more. So we're gonna try and get a boost with the 88 gram. And I also made uh, some connection plugs for HPA, uh, the back of the Z chamber, and then this brass cap and this same thing. Um, this is the guy who took off the valve. This is the same thing as the brass cap. So, if you're familiar with these guys, that's what we mean by the brass cap. The degassers that come with the HD markers. So, this was on the back of the valve. I just unscrewed this. And I replaced it with the Z chamber. But, I made adapters too for my other markers that actually, these are stainless steel. And I tapped and threaded it. It's a 1 8 MPT fitting. But it goes into the valve, like all the way up here, just so the O-ring buries in. And now I have a nipple that can come. I just have to cut a hole up into the shell. Uh, yeah, the outer shell, so it can accept this. And I can run an HPA line directly in here. I can tilt it sideways, and I can have a hard line coming out and run an HPA tank with an HPA adapter right here. So I can run my tank on the side, on this side. I can run it on the top rail if I want. So now we're bypassed. The whole point of this, this is, is to bypass that brass pipe that we got under there. You see it down in there? We want to bypass that. So, because you can't get, at the end of this brass pipe, it's like a, I don't know, millimeter, two millimeter hole or something. And then at the end of that, you have this little brass top hat and it's about a 0 0.2 millimeter. So that's what you're restricted to. You're not running HPA. Liquid CO2 will get through that. No problem. That 50 joules. With the 88 gram conversion from Home Defense 24. But, uh, yeah, that's a little micro pinhole. It's, a lot of people's eyes can't even probably see the hole. It's so small. But anyways, yeah, so this will go right in there. Oh, sorry, in the back of here. So where the Z chamber goes in, it'll be down here like this. And that nipple will stick up through the shell. Well, depending on where you want it mounted. Or... I can just put this 90 degree on here and then put the nipple straight ahead on there. And same thing, I can have it come down the side and then I can run a tank somehow 
connection down here, but I have a different way also. Um, I'm going to run this in here and then just run like a hose line out and then it'll come down around because they're, they're about three inches, four inches. So I can use one just to wrap around the frame and then come straight back into here. So now I can connect my HPA tank straight in here and then just put an HPA stock on it, a tank stock. And now I can run HPA like that. I don't know if I'm going to bore. I might bore this uh, out here. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be worth it or not. Jonathan recommend, highly recommends I do it. He says it does work. So, I mean, I'm sure he's tested, so I can't deny him. But my problem is I don't want to damage the threads that are right there. Um, I could do it, but if I jump, there's a big risk of grinding into those threads and... If you do that, it's game over because there is no replacement valves. I mean, yeah, there might be an alternative, but I, let's not just, I don't want to have to go there. I mean, if I can even see plus 40 joules, 40 joules with HPA, that would be sick. I'd be happy with just that. But um, we're already hitting 50 with CO2 with the 88 grams. So with this D chamber, I'm... It's expansion, so it almost doubles the chamber, so I'm hoping to get a boost. So once I put all that together... Um, yeah, so hang on, let me just put this up here for a minute. I'll take the shell off. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so... <clears throat> Now you can see what I just did to the casing. Like you don't have to compromise the entire top of the casing, so we still got a nice chunk of metal on both sides. So that way we don't have to get rid of this piece. I thought we were gonna have to remove all this, but it looked like that in Kemper's video that you might have to remove all this. But once you actually start doing the Dremel work, you'll actually see you get just do a little bit of time, a little bit of time with the sanding wheel. Just like I did with the HDR magazine on the side, I was just carving a ditch straight down. I put the two shells together, of course, in my hand, and I just dremeled with the other hand. and made a nice, perfect little ditch down in here, just enough till the adapter was able to fit in. Which you see down here. I'm not taking it out of the valve because this is a pain in the ass to do, but here, I'll just take it off quickly. And if you can see, down there we still got lots of meat, so we didn't have to grind through all that. And then in here, got our O-rings properly seated in there. Um, I got some new lube on there, some some new grease I put in. But um, yeah, guys, that's pretty much uh, just like that on this side. And as you can see, fits in there nice and snugly. But. Um, yeah, so basically all I have to do is connect this port to that port and I can run HPA through it. So I can take a braided line. See, if only I can get a braided line. I can make hard lines go down in and fit. It'll come up a little bit through the shell. I could probably do it coming with the side too, but nah, I'm not going to do that no more. If anything, I'll just run a hose line, like a 90 degree angle out, and then a hose line wrapped around and then with another 90 degree on this side and then going straight into it so it's not really sticking out and then that way hopefully um, we can get some nice gains with the HPA um, yeah guys that's pretty much it for this um, I just got it all got to put it all back together I seen Kem's video there last night he was showing that the Z chambers fit but it was too. It's a lot of risk cutting all this out and he wasn't sure if you had to remove all of it. I wasn't sure actually myself. I figured you were going to have to but like I said once you get going you'll be able to see what you need to do. <clears throat> um, so yeah I'll just put this back on here. And that's the HD24 drop-in valve. Uh, Critical Situations has their own as well. Um, so there we go. Put this back on. I just gotta screw it together now. And then yeah, see? 
fits in there nice and snug. <clears throat> That's pretty much it for this. Yeah, and that's just a chamber extension modification. Uh, Sean Kemper's idea from Less Lethal for Dummies. Um, I just couldn't resist. Me and my Dremel, I, I had to go rip at it, so. Um, I'm all about the mods, I'm all about the gains. Gains is easy and it's easy to get high power, but we can't use that kind of power. I can't anyway. We're like most, a lot of places can't use that kind of power. So keep it down around 40 and 60 here in the the more non-lethal, well, the less lethal because it still can be lethal depending on where you hit people. So teach their own. Um, get the ASA on off in here. Um, I'm just going to try this 88 gram when I, or sorry, I'm going to try a, the, the 88 gram CO2 with the Z chamber here extension. So I'm going to try that out first, and then after that, I'll rig an HPA setup up and then give that a go. Until then, guys, uh, stay safe and teach your own. Have fun, guys, as always.